Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to the series where we are taking a deep dive look into the operator modes on the Korg Op6. So far, we've looked at the FM mode, the ring mod mode, and the filter mod mode. And in this video, we are going to finish up by taking a look at the remaining two modes, uh, which are the filter mode and wave folding. So in all of the previous modes that we've taken a look at, we've had this uh, carrier and modulator paradigm. Uh, in all of these cases, you have a carrier, which is the operator that you hear, and then you have a modulator, which uh, feeds into that carrier and modulates some parameter. So in frequency modulation, it's the frequency of the carrier. In uh, the ring mod, it's the amplitude. And in the filter mod, it's the filter cutoff of a built-in filter. These final two modes are different fundamentally because instead of the operator that sits above our carrier, we'll call it a carrier for the moment, or that's, that naming probably isn't quite right, instead of that modulator um, altering something uh, about the carrier, what's really happening is that our uh, operators, which would normally be our carriers, are now processing the uh, the sound that's coming from the modulator that sat above it. So let's take a, a really quick look at what we mean by that. So um, if we bring up operator one, and we'll take a look at uh, the settings here, um, and we play, nothing is happening. And the reason that nothing is happening at this point is because um, it's operator two, which is sat directly above it in our algorithm here, which is going to be fed through operator one and be processed in some way. So if we bring up the uh, level of operator two, we start to hear uh, some signal and then we can process um, operator two and spoiler alert, the filter mode um, allows us to change the cutoff of a filter that's uh, sat uh, in operator one. Uh, in operator three, if we come across this one, again, if we bring it up, we don't hear any sound because it's uh, operator four, which is feeding into it. And as we bring that up, we will hear some sound. So a fundamental difference uh, in these two modes compared to the other three. These modes are essentially additional processes that can be applied to operators within uh, the algorithm that you're using. So these two operator modes, in terms of the way that they process the operators that are sat above them, they do very different things, but they do share one parameter uh, uh, between them, which is this aux mix setting here. So. Uh, in the way that we currently have it set up with this uh, OSC mix turned all the way down, if I turn up operator one and we don't have operator two turned up, we don't hear any sound. Uh, what OSC mix does is it additionally mixes in uh, the uh, oscillator for this operator. Uh, probably easier if we change the ratio to something different. So here we don't hear anything. And as we turn up the OSC mix, we start to hear uh, this operator's sound as well. Now it's important to note that this is not a wet dry mix. You are mixing it in. So it's not the case that we get to 50% and they're balanced evenly. And then we, we go further, we're only hearing one. If you want to get them balanced evenly, what you need is to put your OSC mix level up to full so that they're both sounding at their full um, volume. And this works exactly the same way on the um, wave fold as well. There's no difference. Okay, let's um, actually talk about what these two modes do. So we'll go back over to operator one, which is currently our filter mode operator. Um, I'll leave the oscillator mix down at the moment. Uh, and what I'll do, just because we're talking about a filter here, is I'll maybe set operator two to um, a slightly more interesting uh, let's go with the sort wave. There we go. So um, in terms of the parameters that we have in the um, uh, operator mode for filter, uh, it's quite similar to what we had for the filter mod in that we have a type which sets the various different types of filter. And it's exactly the same set of types as with the filter mod, if you've uh, watched the previous video. So that means we have low pass, high pass, band pass, band reject, which is always nice to have. We have then some other modeled high pass, low pass uh, band passes, including the MS-20 high pass and low pass, which can get quite nice and gritty. Uh, we then have a cutoff and resonance control. The resonance does. 
what you would expect. Uh, the cutoff is not the absolute cutoff. Um, so we can hear that obviously that's opening up the filter or closing up, closing down the filter depending on what type of uh, uh, filter choice we have there. But what's important to note is that the cutoff of a filter mode um, operator is uh, intrinsically linked to the pitch that that operator would be playing. So if we set the uh, resonance nice and high and just temporarily we'll set the waveform for operator 2 as uh, white noise so that it doesn't have a pitch. So you can hear there that we've got one um, certain darkness of the filter there as we turn it down it gets darker and brighter up at the top because as I play across the keyboard as long as this operator is set in uh, ratio mode which it currently is the uh, frequency of this operator is going to be changing and therefore so is the filter cutoff. Um, what that means is that if we set the resonance up nice and high so that we can do that nice um, sort of self oscillating filter and we can start to put pitch onto unpitched sounds for example which is just a nice thing to do. Um, in my previous um, video where we looked at the filter mod, uh, I went through all of the different types of filters. So um, I won't do that in depth here, but I will uh, mention that there are, as I said, different models and they do have kind of different um, feels to them. The um, MS-21s in particular, as you start to crank the resonance, start to properly self-oscillate. Uh, and get quite gritty and distorted, which is a really, really nice option to have, especially when you're doing this kind of thing where we are imparting um, a pitch on a sound through the filter. So if you want to disable this um, filter tracking behavior, I'll just set this back to a sawtooth. Um, here we go. If we want to uh, disable this filter tracking behavior that we were hearing, um, what we need to do is go into the pitch menu here and change this from a ratio. So it's following the keyboard to fixed. And now I've got a nice sawtooth, which has a particular particular darkness to it. And if I want to change that, uh, that flavor, that timbre, then all I need to do is change the frequency. For this operator. So the important thing to remember with the um, filter mode is that for the purposes of the cutoff of the filter, cutoff equals pitch, basically. Um, so that means if we want to um, create independent filter envelopes, which are independent to the master filter, which of course goes across all of the operators, the way that we will do that is by applying um, a pitch envelope or pitch LFO if we want to create some whoops. So here we are in the pitch menu and we've got our pitch set to fixed. And if we want to create an independent filter movement um, on just this operator, for example, via an LFO, if we up the depth here, and that's completely fil uh, independent to the main filter here which means we could also have different um, speeds on those two filters and get some interesting things happening so we've got a slow filter movement and a uh, faster one like that for example which is pretty cool And of course, if we had multiple filter uh, operators set up, we could start to set up different modulations across all of them. And you can get very, very interesting evolving sounds. Uh, similarly, if we come back to the pitch menu for operator one here, if I set the envelope generators, this is going to be envelope gen generator one.
again, this can be separate. to the master filter as well. So you have this ability to create um, pre-filtering uh, on the way to the main filter. Honestly, one of the reasons I think this is a, a nice one to have is, is you know, quite apart from having the, the, the movement here, being able to shape something like uh, a rich sawtooth wave before it hits the main filter if you want to have darker sounds mixed in with a brighter sawtooth sound. Um, having that kind of flexibility is, is really quite a nice thing. So you could, for example, um, have uh, a lower pitched, um, oops, lower pitched and darker sounding filter alongside a, a brighter, higher pitched sound, which wasn't getting filtered. So we've got like a dark sawtooth and an unfiltered triangle going on there. And that's a, an incredibly flexible um, way that you can start using your, your filtering. I think one of the most interesting things that you can do once you have this ability to have multiple operators all operating as filters is to start thinking about having multiple parallel filters. Um, which is always a really, really nice thing to have. So if we choose an algorithm, uh, and there's some towards the end, 20 something, I think, uh, 22, here we go. So in algorithm 22, you have, uh, we'll turn down uh, operators one and two, uh, but you have operator six as a, um, uh, as this upper one here, and it's feeding into operators three, four, and five all at the same time. So we can do things like setting up um, parallel filter banks. So uh, if we come uh, across to our mode here, we'll ignore one and two, we'll set uh, operator three to be a filter and maybe set it to be a band pass filter. And then we'll do the same on the next ones as well. Band pass filter and band pass filter. So now we have three band pass filters which are all being fed by a single operator. Go, and we will turn down the uh, mix level for each of these, so it's just that one uh, feeding in here. And then maybe if we come back, if we go up to operator six here, uh, we'll set it as sawtooth again, and maybe tune it down a little bit. like that. And now if we come into each of our um, filter operators that are all been fed by this single operator here, and maybe give it a little bit of resonance. And uh, let's, uh, in fact, let's set the pitch to be fixed. And we'll do that on all of them. Uh, pitch to be fixed pitch to be fixed and then give it a bit more resonance, give it a bit more resonance. And then if we change the cutoffs of each of them, which we just do here, we can have these this sort of parallel filter bank, which gets you all these cool vocal sounds, for example. You know what FM synth allows you to do the do formant um, uh, synthesis, for example. This does tend to work with a, with a lower pitched sawtooth wave. That tends to be a good place to start for this kind of sound. And then we can start modulating these stuff, uh, the, these um, different uh, filters. So we could go into the V patch and maybe set each of the different cutoff. Uh, rather the pitches it should be. So uh, operator three pitch. And we can go to the next one and give it LFO two to operator four pitch. <laughs> and 
doing get some really cool sounds that uh, you would certainly not expect to to get from a uh, an FM synth. If you can stop your mouth from making shapes while you listen to a patch like this, you are a stronger willed synthesist than than I. It's just a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and, and another thing, if we wanted to make this a bit more vocal, uh, we could perhaps on a couple of these uh, just mix in a bit of noise. Do you want all of them? Just a taste. What we've got here essentially is setting up a, a filter bank and through the user algorithms, for example, you can set up a, a five band filter bank and then feed noise into it or whatever you want to do to, to create um, really nice ghostly sounds. Great stuff. So one other uh, cool thing with the um, filter modes I'd like to highlight, I'll just initialize the patch and um, let's come across to algorithm five will do. Uh, the filters on the op six, whether we're talking on the operators or uh, within the master filter are quite characterful and they do um, resonate quite nicely. So if I bring up operator one and we'll put it into, oops, put it into filter mode, turn the oscillator mix down and turn up operator two. Okay. Um, so, um, if we take operator two and set it to fixed mode and then drop our um, ratio right down, uh, sorry, our frequency right down, obviously we're not gonna really hear anything now because we're at LFO speed. If, then, if you were looking at this on a scope, you'd probably see some DC get moved around or whatever, but we're basically not hearing anything. If we set the wave to something which has hard edges, however, we might just about hear some clicks. So let's just try, um, let's try square. Yeah, there we go, we can hear some clicks. Probably too fast, so let's just drop this down a bit more. Okay. Um, so the interesting thing with these filters, and let's go to, um, Let's try one of the bandpass filters again because these will work nicely. Is if we turn up the resonance now, you can ping the filters and they will resonate quite nicely. And different modes will do different kind of different sort of flavors of resonance. So all we're hearing now is the filter with its resonance being um, cranked, being pinged by a, an LFO essentially, like like someone like Heinbach would, would do. Perhaps he would enjoy this uh, particular way of working with the synth. And of course, because by default with the filter, if they're not um, on fixed, everything is going to be tracking the keyboard. So we get these lovely, sort of faux arpeggios all being driven by these LFOs. And if we um, set the um, LFO, like if you like, shape to uh, one of the ran, uh, so uh, do I mean sample hold? No, I mean, uh, actually, yeah, that'll work. Noise sample and hold. If we have it on sample and hold, because it's a random voltage each time, we get dynamics worked in there as well. Which I think is rather cool. Well, 
One thing to note with the cutoff control on the filter mode is that uh, it is an offset in terms of semitones. So if we want it to go up an octave, we can make it go up exactly an octave because it tracks properly. And you could do things like um, duplicate this uh, same idea on the next one along. Uh, I'm going to use a different filter mode. Turn that oscillator mix down. Just turn that one down for a second. Uh, again, so in operator four, we would set it to sample and hold. Uh, in its pitch, we would go fixed and turn it very low. And I can't remember what the other one was set to. Let's try that. And we could set uh, Set it to a different pitch here. I think I've set these at the same speed, haven't I? Two and two. Yeah, set this at like um, three instead. And we can get polyrhythms and stuff happening in here. Oh, go on, let's add some reverb quickly. So we can create all these interesting rhythmical, organic, pingy. We could even take our master filter crank its resonance. Uh, put another resonance set above it. Lovely stuff. Um, lots of creative ways to use um, the filter mode beyond just shaping some, some waves by cutting out some frequencies. Okay, let's talk about the wave folder mode then. Uh, so operator three here is in wave folder mode. We're not hearing anything at the moment because this oscillator mix is turned to minimum. If we raise the level of operator four, we will hear uh, the wave being pushed through it. I'm just going to change uh, operator four's wave shape to a triangle because um, that's probably the easiest waveform to uh, look at and understand what the wave folder is actually doing. So what is the wave folder doing? Well, it's going to fold the wave. And uh, it is thankfully very easy to um, show you what that looks like on the uh, OP6 because we have the analyzer. So let's come back down to operator three here. This knob here, B, is going to be the gain of the wave folder. And as we push uh, more gain into the wave fo folder, we're going to see more folding. So here is our wave here. Let's turn on the analyzer so we can see it nice triangle wave there. Now as we turn up the gain control, what you'll see it happens quite soon, we get this little divot happening inside our wave shape here. So where we used to have the peak of our wave, that peak has been bent down back on itself and that is generating more harmonic content. We can see here that we've got to the point where it's basically doubled the wave because we've pushed it so far up that it's inverted. But what we've got there is a effective doubling in frequency. And if we push it harder, we get that same thing happening at the other bits. And we can hear that as we crank that gain, we get that lovely wave folding sound, that lovely 
doubling of frequency and all of those intermediate points as those things are happening. So uh, the other control that's going to um, affect the uh, wave folder is the bias control, this one here that is on E. What the bias control is going to do is it's going to push the waveform up or down, depending on which way you turn the, the knob, so that the folding is happening more on one end of the wave than the other. So again, if we come back into the analyze here and just give it a little bit of gain so we can see that little bit of divot happening inside our wave shape. If we turn up the bias, what you'll notice is that it gets deeper here and shallower here, right? And by changing this bias control, it's going to have a massive change on what it sounds like when we up our gain. So uh, for example, let's set our bias to zero and we do a quick sweep. This kind of sounds like harmonics being uh, added in. Let's put our bias maybe to about 13%. And if we do the same thing, there's a sort of harsh and more metallic sound to it. different edge to the sound. And between those two controls, we can get different flavors of wave folding. It's also worth noting that our gain control is affected by the level of the input as well. So if we set our gain control up a little bit, but turn our level down, we get less folding because we're essentially reducing the overall gain and turning up the level here is what's gonna get our folding happening. So um, if we think about that in terms of getting timbre change over time, if we want to get that sort of classic um, wave folder sound, what we want to do is think about the um, level envelope of the operator operator four which is feeding into our wave folder here so um, let's lower that sustain <laughs> by changing our um, changing our envelope here, we're going to get different um, tarbra change over time. Kind of like a filter in reverse, because as the level goes up, what we're doing is introducing uh, more harmonics. Um, so uh, if we think about our oscillator mix here on our wave folder, um, as we turn that up and we're mixing in the os oscillator sound from operator three, that is going to push our wave folder harder as well because there's overall more signal when you mix those two things together. So by balancing the two different, um, oscillators involved here, the bias, the gain. We can get a range of different sounds. Great for harsh, um, weird, tweaky sounds. Now, uh, it is worth noting that uh, because of the nature of those uh, waves being sort of combined together, you will get very interesting results if you detune some of those waves. Much different than just that sort of chorusing that you would expect. There's a frequency interaction that's happening here. Because of the phase of the two waves, whether they're, they're high or low at any particular point, it's going to alter how they're being folded. So it's not just a case of getting that sort of chorusing that you expect. You get this kind of beating that's happening here, but that beating isn't just a uh, a pitch beating, it's, it's affecting the harmonic content of the sound as well. Right? 
there's no LFO going on here, but we're getting this real interaction between the tuning of the the, the two waves that have been mixed together here. Like really interesting, harsh sounds. It sounds almost like you would expect stuff coming from FM, but it's a different kind of flavor. And of course, the different wave shapes are going to have different phase interactions as well, which will again give you different flavors. Really cool vocal sounds there with the triangles. In terms of the wave shapes that you will choose to to make use of um, with the wave folder, rule of thumb basically is you want to choose a wave shape which has a slanted edge. Um, let me uh, demonstrate that. If we just turn the... Uh, let's just revert this um, patch for a second so I can just get back to a baseline here. Okay, so... Um, if uh, we go to operator four here, a sine wave has nice slanted waves. So when you um, fold it, oops, wrong operator, where are we? Uh, operator three, sorry. Um, as we fold it, we get those nice divots and troughs being introduced there. Uh, similarly, as we saw, uh, a triangle wave works really well for this as well. Um, a sawtooth wave has a slanted edge, so that works pretty well. Uh, come back into here. Keep going into the wrong operator there. Let's try that again. So some pretty gnarly sounds there because it's got something to work with on that slanted edge. Almost sync like sounds in that situation. Cool stuff. Um, uh, on the other hand, something like a square wave doesn't give you such interesting results, generally speaking, um, because there's less um, slanted edge to work with. This square wave, as it happens, has a bit of a slant at the top, so this should still give us something. But it's mostly just repeating the same trick over and over again. Right, so there's some sort of interference points there. But there's not really anything dreadfully interesting there because it hasn't got a nice slanted edge to work with. Triangles, um, uh, sign, sawtooth has that one slanted edge to work with as well. Um, any wave shape that has those slanted edges will give you good results. Square waves, not so much. So it's worth noting on the wave folder and on the filter, um, but we'll talk about the wave folder here, is, is that it is a um, operator mode that works quite happily on its own. It doesn't need anything to feed it, really. Um, so if we just turn up operator three, and as long as we have our oscillator mix turned up, we can wave fold it without having anything feeding into it. Um, one thing that I've come back to again and again, though, is pointing out how interesting it can be to apply LFO rate um, uh, modulation, if you like, or the, the operator sat above the, the carrier here being LFO rate instead. So what's really interesting uh, in the wavefold mode, uh, so if we just set uh, the pitch of this one again, we'll go fixed and go down to like 4 hertz or something like that. Um, as we um, turn up operator 4 and therefore uh, start mixing it into the wave folder, what we can hear actually, and if we turn up the gain slightly, we can hear this movement happening. Uh, let's slow that down even more so we can hear it a bit easier. So let's look at the analyzer to see what that's doing. It's massaging our wave in a really interesting way. Let's slow it down some more. Look at that analyzer.
sensor again. Let's see if we can work out what's happening here. Well, it's not just moving the gain around, but you can see it's actually changing the shape as we go as well. Uh, so what's interesting here is if we come back into the mode for operator three and we tweak the bias, uh, we will hear and see Actually, be in the right place there. That's better. A very similar thing going on, right? So, by feeding an LFO rate um, operator into the wave folder, what you're going to be doing is very slowly adding a bunch of stuff as the wave goes high and then subtracting a load of stuff as the wave goes low. So, what you're doing essentially is um, applying a bias. That's all the bias is doing. It's pushing the wave up and it's pulling the wave down. So by using an LFO rate um, operator feeding into the wave folder, what you are essentially doing is independently modulating the bias control uh, of the operator you're feeding into. And of course, we can do all sorts of interesting things with um, different um, different shapes and get different sort of rhythms being pulled out. Within our sound. Pretty cool stuff. So another thing I think is pretty cool when you are dealing with, um, if we turn the oscillator mix back up here, a uh, wave folder operator that's basically doing its own thing, providing its own fun if you like here is uh, if we go to the operator that's feeding it and maybe use a fixed uh, ratio instead. Because you don't so much hear the fact that there is a fixed um, uh, frequency in here. Instead what you get is all those interactions again. And by changing the frequency here we get sort of almost like ring mod type stuff happening in with it but like sort of wave folding ring mod and much like with the ring mod and the filter mod and everything else you can kind of tune this effect so that it works in the key that we're playing in bell tones like I say another flavor of ring mod and changing that bias is going to give us different feels as well which is pretty cool so anyway, um, I hope that was interesting and useful. If it was, then as always, it would be much appreciated if you could hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, because if you are here looking at Op6 stuff, uh, there is some more Op6 stuff to come, let me tell you. Um, so we've looked at all of the um, operator modes here. Plan for the next video is to go in and talk about the user algorithms because I think this is a really really exciting aspect of the synth um, especially as it allows you to think a little bit about creating entire synth architectures inside the op6 which we'll get to um, but i think it is a massively powerful element uh, to the synth from a sound design perspective so i'm really really excited to start uh, exploring that on the channel now that I've discussed all of the different operator modes uh, on the OP6, uh, I also feel a little bit more inclined to um, do some more patch building videos because uh, I didn't really want to skim over what the different operator modes were doing as I was building the patches. I've got some ideas, but if there are some particular types or flavors of patches that you'd like to see um, featured on the channel, then by all means, please let me know down in the comments what you would like to see. I am more than happy to take suggestions. Other than that, thank you so much uh, for joining me. As always, Take care. Until next time. Bye-bye.